Hello friends, and welcome back on another Tuesday with Nye. This week, we're going to talk about interfacing. There are several different kinds of interfacing. Have you ever wondered, what is this stuff for? Do I really need this? Can I just like skip it because I don't know what it is? How do I pick one? I don't know! Ah! Well, don't worry about it. It's really not that serious. I got your back because we're friends. I'm going to show you, but you got to stick around. I'm Nye, and this is Mango with Ellie and Mac. Come along, friends. So let's talk about different kinds of interfacing. There's a whole plethora of categories that interfacing is used for. It can be used for crafts, apparel, embroidery can be used. Um, there's a fusible type. There's uh, interfacing used for quilting. And it's all different weights and styles. You can find fusible. You can find sew-in. You can find different types of weights, lightweight, medium, heavy. And it all depends on what you're using it for. The types, there's a woven, a non-woven, and a knit. So a woven would be like this. This is what a woven interfacing looks like. It literally looks like fabric. And I'll put a picture up there so you can see that it does not stretch. There is a regular side and there is a bumpy side, which is where the adhesive is. So this is not a sew-in. This is an iron-on or fusible interfacing. You would use that, say, for a shirt, if you were going to make the collars or the cuffs, or if you were gonna insert buttonholes. You need that for the sturdiness of the fabric. That's what interfacing essentially is. It's something to help your fabric maintain shape and sturdiness. So then you'll also find that there is a non-woven, and this is a non-woven. These two are both examples of non-wovens. Actually, these three are examples of non-wovens in different weights. This is a lightweight, this is a medium weight, and this is a craft weight. So this one is very heavy and extremely stiff, right? Then you have this really lightweight, which is kind of like, woo, very, very thin. And then you have this medium, which is still kind of bendable, but you see when I flick it, it actually moves. So the weights are different for these three. And you would choose them according to the type of project that you're using. This I would use if I was, say, sewing something that was very dainty and I really did not want it to be stiff, but just kind of wanted it to maintain its shape. So like a light collar or something. Uh, this I've actually used in my wine bag carrier because I was using two layers of it. It actually worked quite well in helping my little wine bag keep its shape, or excuse me, beverage bag. <laughs> and then you have this one, which, you know, it's a medium weight. So if you have a medium weight fabric, you would use this. And that's probably the best way to pick an interfacing. Are you using a lightweight fabric? Use a lightweight interfacing. Are you making something out of heavy fabric like canvas or, you know, something thick like that? Use a heavy weight. So it all depends. And then I have this here, which is a knit. And, and I wanted to take this and show you because, first of all, it's very sheer. You can see right through it. But secondly, look at this. It stretches, but it does not stretch in all four directions. So when you're using a knit interfacing, understand that you are not getting four-way stretch. So you have to cut your pieces of fabric accordingly, um, according to your pattern. And then there's something that you also need to know about woven interfacing is that if you are using woven interfacing, understand that it also has a directional weave. And so you need to find the selvage and cut it according to the selvage on your interfacing, just like you would with your pattern pieces. You'll make a mistake now, sir. I'm here to tell you, you have got to pay attention to the side of the interfacing that actually has the adhesive. Because if you cut your piece the opposite way, you may actually have 
done it so that you cannot actually stick your interfacing to your fabric. So make sure you are paying attention to that. Now, how do you tell which side actually has the sticky on it? Well, you look on this, you can feel that it's sticky, but also because this is black interfacing, you can see the little speckles of glue. On this, you can tell that the sticky part has like a sheen to it, like it's shiny on one side. And the same thing with this, like it's very shiny and sparkly on this side and it's matte on this side. So this side would be the side with the adhesive. And with this one, you can see it has little dots on it. So if you touch it, you can feel that it's rough on this side. So you know that the adhesive is on this side. So plan accordingly and associate your interfacing so that your pieces are cut appropriately because you really don't want to waste this stuff. It's, it's pretty expensive if you, you know, have to cut 15 of the same mango. <laughs> if you have to cut 15 of the same like pieces. Now, these are the four that I have, but there are, you know, many more different types of interfacing. Also consider the colors. Interfacing generally comes in two colors, black and white. Some of the black can be charcoalish colored, but you want to consider choosing one that is going to go with your project. Now, the interesting thing about interfacing is that most of the time you aren't going to see it, but if you're using an interfacing with a fabric that is quite thin, you are likely to see it through your fabric or if you're sewing it with lace. So you don't want to sew a project with black interfacing and your fabric is like really thin and white. That would be kind of awkward. Unless that's what you wanted, <laughs> you never know. So I'm gonna show you some places where you're gonna find some interfacing. I steal the shirt. My husband's gonna be looking for this shirt, but he ain't gonna find it because I'm gonna refashion it and wear it some other way. And he's gonna be like, is that my shirt? And I'm gonna be like, no. Um, <laughs> in this collar, you'll note that the fabric is quite stiff. So when you wear it, ooh, it's so dapper and it just sits up on the neck just like that, like it's supposed to. And some of that is because it has these little color uh, plasty things in there, which is nifty, but that just keeps the points here. But it's the interfacing that keeps the neck or that keeps the collar nice and rigid. Then you also wanna have a look at the, I'm gonna have you have a look at the area where there are buttons there is usually interfacing in here so this is where the cuffs are and the buttons so there's probably a bit of a lightweight interfacing in here as well so you know sometimes you'll have you'll have tops that have facings or dresses that have facings and those facings help to keep the neckline in and sometimes those will be interfaced as well to provide some sort of shape so that when you're wearing your top, it doesn't get all discombobulated and stuff, okay? Okay, so now we know all the categories of interfacing, which are apparel, craft, quilting, fusible web, and embroidery. We know how to coordinate our fabric weight with our interfacing, right? We want an interfacing that is either the same or lighter than the fabric that we're using. We know the different types. There is a fusible kind and a sew-in kind. I know I did not discuss the sewing kind yet, so we're gonna discuss it now. Sewing interfacing is used on fabrics that you cannot iron. You cannot iron. <laughs> and I had to impress that because you can use sew-in interfacing on plenty of projects that you can use fusible interfacing on. Fusible interfacing is a little bit easier and faster, but sew-in is what you need when you cannot press the item that you're sewing. So if you're using a very gentle fabric and it cannot be heated to a certain degrees, you want to use a sew-in, okay? Now, and that would work the same way as you would use your pattern pieces. You would just cut it along with your pattern pieces and sew it in, or you would do a basting stitch to your pattern piece to uh, hold the interfacing on. So we have woven, non-woven, and knit. Here are some tips for working with interfacing. Try to see if you can find an iron shoe. 
An iron shoe is essentially a cover that you can put on your iron that protects both your fabric and your interfacing. So you don't have one of those oops moments where you sew your inter or you press your interfacing to your iron. I've done that so many times and I have cried because getting it off is extremely difficult. You can use one of those. It just goes right on top of your iron and it helps prevent overheating, shine on your fabrics and things of that nature. Or you can just get a simple cotton lightweight fabric and lay that over your interfacing before you press with your iron. That's going to help you out quite a bit. Another tip is, and I actually found this on the Pellon website, go figure. <laughs> there is a product called Sewer's Aid. If you happen to have difficulty and your interfacing really should not stick to your needles, but just in case you're having difficulty with your machine getting through the interfacing, you can use a couple drops of Sewer's Aid uh, in a vertical line down your thread and it will lubricate the thread as it goes and that way it won't stick while you're sewing. And so sometimes when we get the little stick in, it causes the skipping and it causes us to want to pull the hairs out of our heads. No, just me. Okay, then you're better than me. <laughs> Cause sometimes, you know, I got a window right there and my machine, it wants to go out that window. It's gonna grow wings, I'm telling you some days. But yeah, you could just use a couple drops of that. It will lubricate for you and uh, keep it sewing. That's actually a tip from Pellon. Um, once you have fused your interfacing, you are not likely to take it apart. Please remember that. So when you're cutting your interface pieces and you start to press them, make sure you are pressing them to the wrong side of your fabric. Because if you press, and when I say wrong side, I mean, you know, the plain side of your fabric. Because if you press it to the decorative side of your fabric, you will never get it off without a fight. And when I say a fight, I mean like Mike Tyson fight and that fabric is going to win. I'm serious. Um, follow the instructions for steam and heat settings. Uh, each interfacing roll has a paper that is wound around it. If you don't buy the prepackaged kind and you go to like the store, you'll see that each piece has like this crinkle like paper around it, read it, read the instructions so that you learn how to properly use the interfacing. I know sometimes we just wanna get it out the way. You don't wanna do all these sweeping motions. You just want to press, pick up your iron and move it and press and pick up your iron and move it. If you don't do it like that, you're likely to get where your fabric will kind of bubble up off of your interfacing and you're gonna be like, no! because you can't get it off and now you have to start over again. So please read the instructions and just follow them. No big deal. I know sometimes I tell y'all I like shortcuts because I'm lazy sometimes, but some things you just got to do, okay? Let your fabric rest after you've pressed it. It needs to cool down for that adhesive to stay and for it to have a firm stick. Um, so give it a little bit, a couple minutes, let it cool off a little bit, and then try lifting it up at the edges just to double check that you have heated up the entire piece and that it's very well adhesed to your fabric. And the last tip I have is always pre-wash your fabric. The reason why is because some fabrics come out of the manufacturers with, with like a residue on it or it may be pre-treated with something else to protect it for some reason or another. And what you really want is to not have anything between your interfacing and your fabric because it's gonna cause difficulty for your interfacing to stick to your fabric. And nobody wants to deal with that except maybe Nancy. So we don't wanna deal with it though, right? No. <laughs> so make sure you double check that. Did I cover everything that you needed about interfacing today? I hope I did. Do you like what I do with Ellie and Mac? Well, guess what? I'm here every Tuesday and I love coming out here and hanging out with y'all and reading your comments. It is like the highlight of my week, I promise you. There are many of you that come back every single week and y'all are like 
my best friends. You know who you are. <laughs> I make these videos just for y'all. So if you like what I'm doing, please remember to subscribe to Ellie and Mac. Remember to hit the like down there because the more likes I get, the more happy I get. We want a happy night, right? So click the like, please. Thank you. Also, comment if there's anything you want me to cover. I want to cover the things that make you happy. I want to cover the stuff that you need to know about. I may not know everything, but guess what? I'm here for you and I will learn it so I can teach you. How about that? Because we're friends. All right. One last note for today, it is the holiday season. And I don't know about you, but this Nye is super busy. I am going to be taking a little bit of a break this season, but I'll be back after the new year with more sewing tips and fun for you and me to hang out on Tuesdays. This is me signing out, saying for you during this holiday season to sew the things. You missed me saying that, didn't you? I know you did. Go ahead and have a look at some of the videos I have listed in the comments. You might like them or you might just want to continue the fun. I'll see you next time. Bye friends.